Thank you, Brother Baxter. Good evening, all of you. Yes, sir. I'm just a little shorter than Brother Baxter. We're happy to be here this afternoon, this evening, rather, to worship the Lord with you and to pray for the sick. Believing that God will help us all tonight, I trust that He will. We're sorry that the, we have no more seating room for the people. Just come on anyhow. We you be able to get them somewhere? You just come right on anyhow. Or necessary, well, we can take all the cars out of the back and go back there. There's plenty of room back there. So we, wherever the Lord will provide for us. We just have to take auditoriums just as we can get them. And and we have we're happy even to have this. It's very hard to get them. If you excuse me a minute, I think this is a series here, maybe. Sometimes that's what does it when they get it serious. Now tonight I wish to read some of God's Word. I just got here in time to hear the last part of Brother Baxter's speech, or his sermon, rather, on angels. While I was standing back there, I just thought of this scripture. I want to read it out of the book of the Acts, the 27th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, at the 21st verse beginning. Speaking of Paul, Paul being ministered to by a supernatural being when trouble was near. The Lord is a very present help in time of trouble, isn't he? So just about 20 minutes before they came after me tonight, I was sitting in my room and I felt something coming near and near. I didn't know just what it was. I got up, walked to the window, and looked out, kind of rubbed my face a little because I'd been praying quite a bit. I thought that wasn't just impression, surely. All of a sudden, it just swirled me away. And then it was him. And he was confirming something to me that was just fixing to happen pretty soon now. That he showed me about six or eight months ago. And he told me just to see. Keep humble before the Lord, and it would be wonderful when it taken place. So I'm very happy of that. Now, beginning with the 21st verse of the 27th chapter. After a long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have called, and not have loosened Crete but to have and gain this great harm and loss. But now I exhort you to be of a good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of a good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Shall we bow our heads just a moment? Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful tonight for the opportunity to be alive and be here on earth at the closing of this world's history, to see these great things developing, the words of God being materialized and brought to us by the ministry of thy Spirit, and how we love thee for this. And it's such a privilege to get to minister to the people in this last day, knowing that soon the sun will set for its last time. And Jesus shall come. 
we'll see him. Come to his feet and lay our trophies there. Oh, for that great time that I could just crawl humbly up, lay my hands on his blessed feet, then turn with tears of joy and walk away when it's all well. To look around, Lord, and see many gallant soldiers of the cross standing there. To see the man that we just read of a few moments ago in thy word, thy beloved apostle Paul. To see him standing there in his robe, made white and fair. See the crown placed upon his head at the inauguration of the saints. Oh, what a day that'll be. Our hearts are moved strangely as we see nations rising against nation. Look over there in Jerusalem tonight and see for the first time for 2,500 years that the old star of David is waving again over Jerusalem. The fig tree putting forth its buds. To see our own beloved nation like termites eat the foundation out of it. Man, heady, high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truce breakers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof from such turn away. As we hear the Spirit speaking 2,000 years ago to watch this day, now living upon the reputation of our forefathers, on pride and Things as eat like termites, the foundation of our great civilization. Seeing men modernizing things, leaving off the Holy Spirit, adopting reading, writing, and arithmetic for the power of God. Oh, Father, then to see those who still have a living faith. We think of our Master when He said, When I return, will I find faith? He did not question about sincerity or Christianity. He said, well, I find faith when I come. And we're to have this move tonight which stirs the faith of the people. We're grateful to thee, Lord. Not only thankful for every bitter persecution and count it a privilege to carry the cross for our Christ. In the midst of conflict, you said all that they have gone in Christ Jesus who suffered persecution. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad when you say all men are against you falsely for my name. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And we love to know that this is the day that these words are being fulfilled. And even tonight, here before us, we thank you for this lovely audience here in this building tonight. Though it's warm, many are standing, but I'm thinking about one day when John came out of the wilderness of Judea preaching, and he stirred all the regions around about Jordan. It wasn't his fancy dressing, for he wasn't dressed very fair. It wasn't his speech, for at nine years old he went into the wilderness, but it was he preached Christ, and it stirred the regions. Though in his simplicity yet today it stirs the regions and Christ is brought to a realization to the people's heart that he has rose from the dead and live among his people. Now forgive us of our sins. As we think of we were aliens one time cut off from God without mercy. Christ died in our place, innocent for the guilty. And it doesn't yet appear what we shall be like, but we know we'll have a body like his, for we shall see him as he is. In our bodies now we groan for that day. All the earth is groaning for that day. We thank thee that thou hast made a way for us to be happy, have health and strength, and to labor and harvest for our Master. Grant, Lord, that many of those who have not that privilege tonight, when this meeting shall close, may they be going out of this building happy and rejoicing, healed. Many sinful be saved. Many just got cold and wandered away and be called back to the kingdom of God tonight with the arms of a loving Father and the Spirit to woo them to God. Grant it, Lord. Hide your servants tonight behind the cross. May the blood stand between us and all danger. And may the simplicity of the gospel attract the attention of everyone 
For we ask it in the name of thy Son, Jesus. Amen. We're happy to be in tonight, to be serving God with you all. And now, the announcement that tomorrow and Sunday is our last day here, as far as we know, then to Toledo uh, area, and then from there to Shreveport, Louisiana, and then Southern Rhodesia, Africa, from there. I'm expecting you to pray for me. As the meetings grow on, it takes more of effect all the time. Last evening, I had quite a time coming out from under anointing. Many people doesn't understand that. I realize that. I never understood it so much until about a year ago. I was wondering how it was that, that that would make a human being feel the way it does. So weak. Just your strength becomes so depleted, I just can't stand up. I can't hold myself together. And then they start shaking. I thought, wonder if that would... But when I found out that our master said that virtue had gone from him, that settled it. Then I was standing at the desk, the old Kentucky home, just across the river a ways from where I live now. It's my first trip there, and I, where Stephen Foster, a famous American poet in years gone by, who wrote his famous song, Old Kentucky Home. If you notice, most always poets and prophets and so forth are considered in the world erotics. Did you ever think of that? They all always are misunderstood. For instance, Stephen Foster, I think he gave America some of its best folk songs. Old Folks at Home, Swanee River, Old Black Joe, and many of those good old heart songs of the Southerners as they gather around the plantations and sing, calls the teardrops to run down the cheeks of many. And while I was had my arm laying on his desk, the guy had gone through and some from my Sunday school class, his picture was painted there, and the seraphim that was supposed to have touched him and given him his inspiration was painted by him. I thought, Mr. Foster, speaking to his picture, I said, you had it in the head, but not in the heart. He would go under inspiration from one of those songs, and he'd write the songs, and after he'd come out, he'd go away and get on a drum, stay drunk for a long time. And then one day, after coming out from under inspiration, he called a servant, took a razor, and cut his throat, committed suicide. How many milk knows that famous old song, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, where sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoice to see that fountain in his day. There may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. The famous English poet William Capper wrote that song. I stood by his grave a few months ago. I just couldn't keep from shedding a few tears for him. I looked there and see Charles Wesley laying there him. Bunny that wrote the Pilgrim Progress. The cousin of John Wesley wrote Robinson Crusoe. Wesley himself across the road. I thought of William Capper. He was considered in England an erotic, a little off. And how did he would go into the inspiration and finally he went way into the inspiration and wrote this marvelous song, There is a fountain filled with blood. While he was up there, he was in the spirit. But when he dropped back down, he tried to find the river to drown himself, commit suicide. It's so foggy they couldn't get him, he couldn't get to the river. William Camper. I thought of Jonah, the man of God, the prophet, who was spoke of God and sent down to Nineveh with a message to those people. And God was so determined and filled him so full of his spirit till he stayed alive three days and nights in the belly of a fish in the bottom of the sea. He came out with such power in his speech until the people listened to him and 
put sackcloth on their animals on the hills. The whole city is so ignorant. One didn't know, some of them didn't know the right and left hand, but repented before God and spared their city. And then as the inspiration left Jonah, he wanted to die, sat under that tree and asked God to take his life. What was it? Prophet. I noticed Elijah, when he went up there on the Mount Carmel that day and fell under inspiration and called fire down out of heaven. And the same day he called rain down from heaven. Water and rain, I mean rain and fire from the same skies under inspiration. But when it left him, he ran out in the wilderness and sat down and said, Lord, let your servant depart in peace. What does it speak? Misunderstood. You can't understand it. Millions out of one. Very seldom touch the age of it. When you go up there, there's something you're beyond here. When you drop back down, it feels like you've lost something. There's something missing somewhere. I like to fish and hunt like a normal person does. I like to talk to my fellow man, associate. That's, but when it comes time for God to use me, he takes me somewhere I don't know nothing about. And then when I'm coming back, I lose all sight and thoughts of places, time, and where it is. But here's what he speaks to me. There's a land beyond the river that they call the sweet forever. If there's a place where here on earth we can rise into that spirit realm there, there's a place there where we go when we leave this body. Only a direct vindication. I would wish tonight that everyone would Try to understand closely the angel of the Lord and his great mission and work here on earth. And because some a human being, poor and uneducated and so forth, is declaring it, don't look at the man, look at the God. If a man were running here tonight with a telegram or money order for you for a hundred million dollars, you wouldn't care whether he was dressed ragged, whether he was colored, yellow, who he was. It's a message that he brings. Someone said of the day, said, I went out to this, your meeting the other night. Are you the preacher's holding this meeting out here? I said, yes, sir. I said, well, you just got a common bunch of people. I said, yes, sir. That's the kind that hears God. I said, this is written in the book of Luke that the common people heard him gladly. And it hasn't changed. Those whose treasures are here on earth seek their earthly things. But those whose treasures are in heaven, that's where their heart is. They look from whence Jesus shall come to take them there. Many times, people get in such a big hurry about their healing. If God pronounces something, you believe it. Whatever he says, you hold right to it. Listen to him coming from different meetings testifying. Just hold on to what's said to you. And remember, as I say tonight, feel very little to stand here and speak concerning the Scripture. I'm just a baby in the Word. I was converted in the Baptist church and just come out to the Baptist church. I belong to no church now that I might pull together the family of God, not representing any one church, but only the one church, and that's the only true church, the body of Jesus Christ. When it first came to me, many different the organizations, the Baptist people never kicked me out. only way you get kicked out of a Baptist conference is immoral living, not your doctrine. It's immoral living. But they didn't believe in divine healing and gifts. They said it won't work. But now they see that it does. So I said, there'd surely be somebody, if God had sent it, there'd be somebody who was ready to receive it. I didn't know enough about you people then. I didn't have a few friends. I've always been more or less as expression would be black sheep. But I thank God but trying to live for him and do what's right. He's given me a million friends now. 
He'll give you the desire of your heart. When I come into the church or into the midst of you people and receive the baptism of the Spirit, it's the first time in my life I ever felt at home. Never felt like I was with people who loved me and understood me. I was always considered something else. Maybe a neurotic. But I'm glad that I, I'm home tonight God. with God's people. Yeah. And understand now the angel of God, sometimes when a blessing is pronounced upon you, it may not be that he can't get to you right then. It might not be just instant healing, but as you believe, your faith will make you whole. Some people have spontaneous faith, great faith, that deep. That's a miracle. Some of them have faith about that deep. It'll take a little while. Some has mustard seed faith, very little, but just stay with it. It'll bring you out. It'll materialize. When God spoke, this, the, the, the dirt that you set over tonight, that's God's Word. God just said, let there be, and His Word materialized. Is that true? Amen. Or did He get the dirt if it wasn't? He just spoke it, and it's God's materialized Word forms the earth that you set on. Oh, how wonderful. How past finding out. It's by faith that we believe Him. God believed His own Word, and it formed the world. If we had time to go into those things. Now, this I want to say, that while God sends His messengers, angels, concerning virtue again, did you notice on the pool of Bethesda when that angel came down, the first person stepped in that was with faith that God healed, the whole angel enclosed him and went off the pool. Did you see how that is? How can you understand? Someone said, I don't see why that if the Holy Spirit would get Brother Branham under that condition, then he wouldn't have strength to stand there and pray for the whole bunch. See, it's misunderstanding, dear Christians. I can't explain it. I just, you just have to take my word for it, that's all. Now, and then sometimes in the scriptures, I, I may not know too much about the word. I don't know the book, but I know the author, and I, and I love him, and I'm sure he won't let me get too far out of the way. When I say this, I know I'm right, that every person in here, that it's already healed every one of you. The only thing that I can do or God can do, anyone can do, is to bring your faith up to believe that. If there's any minister, any person in here can do anything to help anyone to believe, that's what you're supposed to do. And God in His sovereign love has sent down this gift to manifest before you to let you know that He never died back there. He rose again. And He's the resurrected Christ with us tonight. His same powers, His same manifestation. Though you don't see Him, yet you know He's here. You see Him in the spirit form working. Judas said, or Thomas rather, he said, if I can touch his sides and I can touch his hands, I'll believe him. He said, how much greater is their reward who has never seen me and yet believe me? He might not materialize himself before you tonight, but he's here. And every word of God is a seed, and it'll materialize if you believe it. Just accept it in your heart, believe it, and it'll come to pass. Now, sometimes, maybe if you're prayed for, you hear the angel of the Lord speak out and say, Thus saith the Lord, you be well. Don't you doubt that. Remember, if it's a malignant or cancer or growth, in about 72 hours, you'll get good and sick. Brother Baxter's probably explained all of that, which he does in a meeting, telling you what it all is. Because without that, you'll sure miss your healing. You won't understand how to do it. If you don't know how to approach it, you're certainly out. So that's what the afternoon meetings are for and so forth, is to explain that. Brother Baxter does it, for I don't have the time. And if I go into the like that, then it sometimes takes the spirit away from me and I have quite a time getting it back. Now, how many know ever read in the book about uh, angels ministering to people in the Old Testament and the New Testament? We all have. 
sometimes when a blessing is pronounced, it's pronounced only it has to happen. We're the only one in a hurry. God is never in a hurry. He let the Hebrew children walk right into the fiery furnace before he'd done anything about it. He just sat in the heavens and watched them until they went in. Here not long ago, there was a woman that was at one of the meetings, and she had a serious stomach trouble. And she went home from the meeting, and she came across the platform, and she before she couldn't eat at all, nothing had lay on her stomach. It just acid would fill her, her mouth, and she would get all full of gas, and, and she would just be in such an awful condition she should have fluttering in her heart, and she couldn't rest at night. And she said, when I walked to the platform, looked at you, said, you took a hold of my hand and said, again, said, your face changed and something spoke in a different tone of voice and said, thus saith the Lord, you have stomach trouble, but your faith has made you whole. She said, I went on the platform rejoicing, the happiest person I thought there was in the world. She said, I went in that night, I went home and I tried to eat. And she said, when I tried to eat, it was just the same as it ever was. But I stayed right with it. I didn't let go. She said, days after days passed. You done left the city and a couple more cities. And she came to the meeting. She said, one morning I tried to eat some oatmeal for my breakfast and it was spitting up in my mouth. And she said, I sent him the window washing dishes crying. He said, Lord, I, I, I just can't help but know that it's the truth. And he told me if I testify about anything less, why my faith would drop down. That while I was standing there, said the sweetest feeling come over me I ever felt in my life. She said, All the burning let up. The swelling without belching, she said, left me. She said, I reached over and got a piece of orange. It usually just upset me terribly on the table and began to eat it. Said it when it went out, it didn't burn. She said, I finished my bowl of oats. Poured some coffee that I hadn't drank in a long time. Drank it and it was well. She said, I run over to my neighbor to tell her she'd been prayed for, a few houses below me. She'd been prayed for for a girl on the side of her throat. And I went out to tell her what had happened. So when I got there, she was screaming on top of her voice and said, the girl that just left her throat. What was it? It's the angel of God passing through the neighborhood. His blessings have been pronounced. Sometimes they can't get to you just as they wish. How many remembers when Daniel, the angel, come to him and said, 21 days is withstood. Do you remember that? Daniel prayed, but the angel said that he had trouble there and couldn't get to him for 21 days after he made the prayer. So don't be in a hurry. Just believe. Have faith. And if you accept Jesus tonight as your healer, have faith. It's got to come to pass. And another thing, I would never bring a person to the platform if it wasn't for one thing. That I might get face to face with the person. Many times out in the building, you'll hear me call people, say things. I sit materialized. The very life before me materializes. Maybe I start here and look out down there. I see a little girl saying, and let's start materializing. I see the way she's... Something happens, and I'll just start speaking. What a see, and then after a while, I'll leave before me, and maybe right along here sits the woman. She's done come down to this age, and I see where she's at. Maybe she's in a hospital. Maybe something happened. I just speak that. Then maybe before I speak it, I see the person go away. Well, maybe I do not. I just say, "The Lord bless you. The Lord heal you," which He already has, giving them faith. But on the platform. I have to watch. I'm just opening up my heart. I feel that I'm before friends tonight. I have to be careful what I do. Do you know divine gifts could cause you to lose your soul? See, you have to watch what you do with divine gifts. My heart goes out. I look here and see this little waterhead baby laying before me now. You don't know how my heart goes for that baby. I wish I could see what would take place. How happy I'd be to say to that other mother there, Oh, Jesus Christ has healed your baby. Your prayers are in. Wish I could say that. But I can't till he tells me. And I have to be careful. Now maybe the privilege of getting that person before me, maybe there's something causing that. Well, if I could, if maybe one standing before the person, or this lady sitting here, or you, or any of you, 
It might see the word reason. Now, if you notice, I'm very particular how I rebuke a spirit out there. Because you have to watch. Sometimes God uses sickness for chastisement for the people. Did you know that? Sometimes it's brought upon them for a whip to bring them back to God. And what if God has permitted something there and I, by divine gift, take it off without the repentance of that person? Did you notice the man here that's telling me a couple nights ago or something other that was standing here on the platform that he, he professed to be a Christian? He belonged to a modern church and everything. And he had some trouble along with him. And I looked and I kept seeing it turn dark and I kept watching. I seen him standing on the corner with a cigar in his mouth smoking like that. Blowing the smoke. I said, sir, you have a habit. And that's what's standing between you and God. If you're ready to lay down those cigars, God's ready to heal you now. Okay? Here not long ago, there's a woman come across the platform, very saintly looking woman. And she walked up on the platform. She had one ear deaf. I just detected a deaf spirit. And I tried to rebuke it, and it, it stayed with the woman. And while looking at her, I seen a young lady standing in front of me, about 14 years old. And she took the road to strong. I began to tell her, told the woman that she had a baby before she was even married. And then she married a man. She left him. And by that was some religious cult. Caused her to marry some other man. And she didn't love him. She left him. And I said, you're living with a husband now that you're having all kinds of trouble. And the woman fainted on the platform. And when she rose up from there, she screamed, God have mercy on me. And when she did, God opened up her ear and gave her the baptism of the Holy Spirit standing on the platform right there. <laughs> Following that was a woman, female trouble, wouldn't leave her in the meeting. I don't know why. Richard T. Reed, Reverend Richard T. Reed, the blessed old Bible Hour Tabernacle at Jonesboro, Arkansas, was the one who baptized them into the church. The next morning you might have asked him, you have to be careful. God entrusts you with something that you can't use it just for, for your own good. You're to use it for the glory of God. Is that right? How many believe Moses was a prophet? He was, and God loved him. And when he went down there to the rock, God said, You go down there and speak to the rock, and it'll bring forth its waters. But Moses, in his anger, he was high-tempered. He went down there, and instead of speaking to the rock, he smote the rock and smote it twice. That broke the whole picture of God's program. The rock was Christ. You believe that, don't you, ministers? He was only smitten once, and we speak to him now. Is that right? And Moses smote the Christ the second time. But that broke the whole picture of God's great program here. Burst it into pieces right there of Christ being smitten twice when he's only smitten once. But God was under obligation. He'd give that prophet the power to do so. But God dealt with Moses later about that. Is that right? How many remembers Elijah? He was a young man. He went bald-headed when he was a young man. And some little children run behind him and said, Old bald head, old bald head. And that prophet's anger turned around and put a curse on those children in the name of the Lord. And two she bears come out of the woods and kill 42 little innocent children. Is that right? That's not the nature of the Holy Spirit, but there was an angered prophet. See? You have to be careful what you do with divine gifts. I'd rather see it and know what I'm talking about than I know whether our Heavenly Father has said yes or no. Surely you can appreciate me more if I'll be sincere before God. Even if you, I don't get to very many of you, you'll understand. I have to know first that I can pr pronounce it after God has shown me, but I can do nothing till He shows me. I promise to tell you the finish of the story from Finland last night, which I've got about eight minutes to do it in. I just got through telling you the little war orphan was healed between the time the two little boys that was hit and one killed, laid some 15, 20 minutes dead on the road before it came around and it showed the vision here in America. How many was here last night? Let's see. You, well, you remember then of the story. Then this other little baby was in the hospital dying. On the next day, the next morning, this mother and father of the other little boy had a concussion of the brain. He'd never come to himself. The fender hit him right on the chin and turned him over and rolled him across the road and hit on the curb and up from the curb and smashed him upside the tree like that. 
It never come to his blood as from his ears and eyes and mouth. The poor little fellow. And the mother and father were just frantic. They were young Finnish people and they were trying to come for me to go down to the hospital. It's against the rules. The managers don't let me go from one place to another because if you do that, then if you go to this place and not this place, it causes a feeling. So they just put them all in the church at one time and there the Spirit of God operates from there. So they had to do that overseas. And I'll never forget this. Mrs. Isaacson, she said, Brother Branham, I tell you, those people are about to run me wild. And that night when they come in, there was a little mother and father sitting on the steps. They had to drag me over them to get in. They almost pulled my coat off. And others standing on the street. I thought, oh, what is it? She said, that's the mother and father of that little baby. They want you to go to the hospital. The next morning, they were still there again. So Miss Isaac said, would you just speak to them yourself for a few moments? I said, get them in the hall. And they got in the hall out there, and they went to him, and they said, Oh, come heal our baby. It's dying. It's dying. About three days, and never come to itself. I said, I can't heal your baby. This is all to an interpreter. I said, I can't heal your baby. He said, Well, you heal the other. I said, No, no. Jesus Christ healed the other baby. Not me. See, I had nothing to do with it. I said, Over in America, he showed me a vision a year ago that this little boy would be brought back from the dead. He never showed me your boy. And they said, oh, see a vision for our boy. And I said, oh, I, I can't see visions at my leisure. I said, I only see them as God will permit them to be seen. I said, you pray. They went on. She just couldn't understand it. And I said, she said, as Miss I said, ask him if my boy's going to die. I said, I do not know. She said, well, come down to the hospital and ask God to heal him. And they said, we can't do that. And then I asked them, I said, are you Christian? No, neither one of them is Christian. I said, well, look, if God takes your little boy home and you die a sinner, why, you can never see him no more. And if the little boy, if God takes him up to heaven and you die a Christian, give your hearts to God and die a Christian, you can go up home to heaven with your little boy and never have another accident up there. That's one thing, thank God. And I said, there won't be any accidents up there, and you'll live forever and ever. But if you don't, you'll never see your little boy no more if he dies. And I said, then, if you wanted a favor from me, you'd try to do something for me. And if you want a favor with God, do something for God. And I said, why don't you give your lives to God? And they seemed they couldn't lose on that, because they would be Christians. If a little boy died, well, they'd go home with him. And if he didn't die, perhaps they'd find favor with God, and he might live. So they got out on their knees and, and they gave their lives to Christ. And when they got back up, the little mother, it sounds like a joke, but I don't believe in telling jokes on the platform and uh, here, but it wasn't a joke. She jumped up and ran over to me real hysterically and she said, uh, 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 with Miss Isaacs' hand holding her, said, said, see a vision, see a vision for my boy. See? And I said, I do not know. She said, come go down now. I said, no, God can show me in my room just the same as he can down there. And she said, go in and see a vision for our boy. I said, now, I can't make God show me a vision. Now, he may never say one thing to me. And if he does, I tell you, if he doesn't, well, I can. And so she said, well, we wait. You go in. That was mighty sweet, but, uh, you know, you can't do those things. So Miss Isaacson, she finally got them to leave and went in the room. In about 20 minutes, they called up and said, has God shown the vision? <laughs> no. About 10 or 15 minutes again, they called up, has God showed the vision? <laughs> they did that for several times before the evening service. That night in the, in the service, it was a marvelous, great service. Uh, those Laplanders and things coming in, being healed, hundreds after hundreds of them. Never even get to the prayer line. If they could even gain the, uh, get into the auditorium, they'd stand way back there. You'd see crutches and sticks of flying, and they'd throw down their cots that they're packing them on, walking out. That's, they just wanted to see it done. That's all they know. God was there. Why can't we do that? Why can't we have that simple faith? See? If we wouldn't be so trying to figure things out, it'd happen right here the same way. See? God's no respected person. He just respects faith. See? God doesn't heal you on the merits of your salvation. He heals you on the merits of your faith. See? Then um, we got went home. And when it never gets dark there that time of year, you can read out in the middle of the street at midnight anytime. No lights or nothing. And then a little later on, the sun never goes down. It just goes low. It comes back. 
the land of midnight sun. So we, I went upstairs. It got dusty like. So I was upstairs in the hotel, and I went to the window. I had this Bible. I'll never forget this. Listen closely now. I'm fixing the clothes. And I had this Bible, and I went in, and Brother Baxter there, and, and uh, my brother Howard, he uh, had been healed of a horrible thing my brother had, sent home the army to die. And he, we, he went with me. And Brother Baxter and he was in the same room. And Brother Lindsay and Brother Moore was in the room. Miss Isaacson was in her room. And I had a private room on account of stay by myself on account of the visitation of the angel of the Lord. And I went, and friends, if I had time, I could talk from here to week after week and never tell you a third of what he, I've seen him do of the great mighty things. And at night time, I just wonder which, what to say that but he'd want me to tell him of some of the things he's done, just as a testimony. And he said, I believe we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the testimony. Is that right? He's the high priest of our testimony. And so he, uh, we walked in, I walked in my room. I had this year Bible that my church gave me just before leaving on the campaigns. And when I started out at the appearing of the angel. And I had it here. And my brother, going up that night, had given me two little pieces of candy that he had gotten about that big. Now, please, Canadian friends, don't take this wrong. Some of the most loyalist friends I got is across that border in Canada. Just as loyal as they can be, and they're lovely. But they don't have things as we have here in the States. They don't have them anywhere in the world like we have it here. We've got stuff to make with we got the best cars. we got the, the best of everything. The trouble is we're so unworthy of it. And they don't have the ingredients to put in their candy. And we've got to hold some candy in Canada. It was horrible. It's like just something like uh, oh, starch. And, of course, they do have good candy, but we just got some bad. So Howard said to me, he said, Bill, and he said it kind of back away from Brother Baxter. He said, Taste this candy here. You thought that candy we got up around Prince Albert was bad. He said, you taste this if you want some starch. And I said, just put it in my hand. I said, all right. He was trying to get me out of the, uh, from the anointing, you know, shaking me a little. So we went into the room. I laid the candy down on the desk and walked over and laid the Bible down. I walked over there to the window and I looked out and here was the Finnish soldiers and them coming down through the park just talking about the meeting, you know, and going on and one telling how he's seen a certain person healed and they're just crowding the streets coming away from the auditorium. And I stood there and I looked way across the mountains from which the Russians come over to bomb the Finns when they was in the war. And I looked across there and I said, yeah, the Russian planes come from that way one day, but from the east shall come the Lord Jesus will break the skies and the wings will spread their air again. But it will be the Son of Righteousness with healing in His wings. I thought, oh, great Jehovah, how wonderful, how marvelous you are. Your works are past finding out. I said, how glorious, how I love you, what you're doing here. As soon as I set my foot on European soil, the Holy Spirit seldom ever left me. It just made right day and night. The ministers will tell you the same. You'd be downtown. I'd say, now when we go home, you're, it's going to be a man. Step out to one side, be dressed in gray. You know, try to get me to go upstairs and pray for a woman. Right around the corner will be two women dressed in black, and they'll meet me like this. And you'll, you'll see a wheelchair down here at this corner, and this person will be healed, or, it'll go on, or just like that. Just everywhere it was, just constant vision pouring all the time, like that hive was going. And then I was just praising God, standing there like that. I said, oh, great Jehovah, how wonderful you are. I said, how I love you, how I love you, oh, how wonderful. I uh, opened my eyes like that. I heard something go. I looked, and here he was standing right by my side. He looked at me like that. He's a big man, weigh about 200 pounds, real dark hair to his shoulder, olive complexion of meat look to his face, has his arms folded, white robe, and barefooted. He stood right there and looked at me. And he turned his head like this and looked at that table. When I looked at that table, there set a, a little base about that high. How it ever got there, God only knows. But there's a little base sitting there. Now, that isn't vision. Now, I don't know what a vision is. I should know. And I don't know what it is when the man's there. He's not a vision. He's just as real as any of these men standing here. He's just real. I talk to him. And he talks to me. It's not a vision. A man standing there. I hear him when he walks and everything. He's 
just as real as anybody else. And that light's always above him, just swirling around like that. And he's here now. <laughs> and he, I know he's here. I feel it. And he stood there and he said, what are those? And in that vase was two, uh, though I call them Easter flowers. I don't know where you call them, daffodils. They come up in spring, little yellow flowers, like, you know, we call them Easter flowers down in our country. And one of them was laying down like this, and the other was going down. And like that. Now, I thought one was leading to the north and the other to the south. Now, not knowing that at this time, that was the very position these two boys fell in. One was hit this way to the north and was run over and mashed under the car, and the other fender struck on the car, turned this way, and threw the boy against a tree on the other side. And this one down here was all the way down. And I looked at that, and this one here on the left was going, and this one was laying flat. And he said to me, he said, what was that your brother gave you? And I said, two pieces of candy, sir, instead of eating them. And I picked up one, and I cut my mouth and started eating it. Tasted wonderful. I, I swallowed it, and when I swallowed it, something like that. And this one was laying to the north like that, stood right straight up. And this other was going, he said, eat the other one. And I picked it up, and it was a harmless tasting thing that I ever put my mouth in. I took it out like that, and this one kept going. He said, eat that one, or this boy will die. I put it back in my mouth, and I started chewing it real fast, and I swallowed it, and as soon as I swallowed this one, both of them stood up like that. And he looked at me like that, and kind of bowed his head, and that whirl of light went. He wasn't in the room no more. I ran out and called Brother Baxter and all of them in there. I said, here, get a hold of the woman, quickly. Thus saith the Lord. That boy will live and not die. That they called several times that day, doctor, don't give him up. So she went to this little phone. You ought to see what it is, the phone there. Oh, my. Puts the little thing in your ear and turns the crank. And she called the home of the parent. The, home, the parent had been called to the hospital. The baby was dying. I said, get a hold of the hospital and tell the mother, thus saith the Lord. Friends, it can't fail that. It just can't. I said, the baby's going to live no matter what the doctor said. God said the baby's going to live. So I said, tell her the baby has come. And she, and she called the hospital, and the mother comes to the phone, a sobbing and a crying, and said, Brother Branham said to you, thus saith the Lord, your baby's going to live. I said, how well I know it. About two, five minutes ago, he raised up his two, he's self and normal right now. We're going to take him home. There he was, made perfect, normal, and well. Now, what was it, friend? Was it my prayer? No, no. <laughs> It was that little Finnish woman's faith in God that did that for her baby. That same angel of God that showed that vision that night, who stands here at the platform tonight, is here to perform anything that Jesus Christ ordained to be done, for he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, oh, how my heart just burns. I think of someday when it's all over, when I get to meet all those people again. I think of the letter we got the other day in the mail saying, that man that's a buddy to Jesus, that poor little boy in gratitude. How we are so thankful. How I'm thankful here tonight, Lord, to know that the visions go forth and you permit them to be told and then watch them materialize for it's your word, Lord. You're God. You can't lie. It's impossible. And we're so thankful to know that you're here. And now, Heavenly Father, as the meetings are wearing on, many are being healed. The Spirit of God is moving on mortal bodies. And we thank thee for it. And now tonight, Lord, oh, please, dear Jesus, the Son of God, the author of life and giver of every good gift, send thy blessings upon this audience. They're waiting here in this heat of the evening. When the evening was set, Jesus, they brought many to him, and he healed them by the power of his word. And may the word of God tonight sweep out over this building, 
And may the Holy Ghost be here to take that to every hungry heart and confirm it, Lord, with signs and wonders that the people might know that the same Jesus that they brought the sick and afflicted to many, many years ago sits in this auditorium tonight with the same unveiled power to reach out there in virtue flowing through this audience to every believer. Oh, Christ of God, many things has happened since those days. Many have seared the conscience of people and has caused disappointments and everything. But, Father, I pray that you'll press back every scar tonight, heal every broken heart, and may the power of God once more burn in a living faith through every heart. Grant it, Lord, that your great name might be glorified. For we ask that in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Like a mother, 
nurses her friend and child to help. No matter how old you are, how far you're gone, he's El Shaddai. Lean on his bosom, his word, and nurse from it. Draw from it till your body receives strength. Amen. All right. Have you got room for a few more? All right, let's go up to 65 then if you got some more room. All right, see if, and if we can get some more, then sometimes when the, they begin to come through the great faith, what's that? What was that letter again? E, from 51 to 65, then stand up. That'll bring up about a few more. And then if the line gets started, well, then it won't be too much trouble. Now, how many out there has not got prayer cards and wants to be prayed for and wants God to heal them? Boy, I see you plumb in the back back there. All right? I, I say this by the authority of the angel of God. It is not this sign that does it. Jesus sent this angel and said this, told me, he said, you were born in this world to pray for sick people. And if you get the people to believe you, and will be sincere when you pray. Nothing shall stand before your prayer. That was the commission. And I said, they won't believe me, sir. I'm uneducated. I can't speak like other ministers and so forth. He said, as the prophet Moses has given two signs to vindicate his ministry. See, Moses complained that he was slow of speech, which was true. Maybe stammered. But he couldn't speak well. God was going to heal him of it. But he said, who made the mouth of man? Moses is just what God made him. He said, as Moses was given two signs to vindicate his ministry, so will you be given two signs. He said, one, you'll take hold of her hand. You'll know, we'll tell him what's wrong. Not you speaking, but the angel speaking through me, you see. He said, the next, you'll tell them the very secrets of their hearts. And the first was, how many remember, I couldn't know nothing, but just want to tuck hold of hand. And how many of you remember that early day of the ministry? Do you remember me telling you it would come to pass what you see now? Is that right? Raise your hands if it is. And I said, it will come to pass. Has it? Well, the Bible said, if there be one spiritual or prophet, and what he says comes to pass, then believe him. Is that right? For I'm with that. But if it doesn't come to pass, don't believe it. Those things are born. You're born to do that. And now, friends, do you believe me? Then listen to what I'm telling you. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, healed every one of you at Calvary. And I or no other man can do anything about it, no more than point you to Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of God, who was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities, the chastisement of, of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. Then I speak the truth. It's in Christ and not in me or not in the angel of God. This angel of God has nothing to do with the healing only to vindicate what Almighty God has done for you according to your faith. The angel does not heal. It only shows and sees visions. It's a messenger sent from God. How many understand now? Your healing is complete already. If you'll just only believe it. All right. Bring the lead. How do you do, lady? I just want to get this up here. Can you hear me all right when I'm talking low? Somebody tells me when the anointing comes down that I don't talk very loud. Can you hear me back in the back if I'm talking this loud? That's fine. Thank you. Now, all of you will appreciate this and be in prayer for me. Will you do that? I just, you don't have, well, if I ask you to bow your head, sometimes an evil spirit rises up, you see. And what it does is it's a battle. And then you've got to take, how many read my little book back there, my book, uh, Man Sent from God? That's fine. I, I hate to mention anything like that on the platform. I wish I was able to give every one of you one of them. I just wish I could. Uh, I can't. I can't afford. I haven't got any money to do that with, and I'm I'm poor. That's true. God knows that's true. 
That's right. If I took the money been offered to me, I'd been a multi-millionaire. But I'd rather be poor and have favor with God than the best home you've got in Toledo. That's right. I'd rather have it. Because this is my, my work, to serve God. That's what's in my heart. If you go to fool, if a minister of three things, if he goes to fooling with, he's ruined. Then it's first thing with money, then women, and then popularity. When he goes to thinking he's something, right then he's on his road out. That's right. For we're all flesh, just like grass. There's no good in none of us. The only thing that's good about us is what part of God is in us. And he weaves just average through all of us. So there's nothing one above another. We're just all the same. That's right. God's children. We're brothers and sisters. And I've tried by the help of God to stay away from such. And you pray for me that I'll always be that way. I can serve him till the day comes when we walk up before him. Then I look out over this Toledo bunch and say, Toledo, you love a little audience and set them hot auditoriums that night. I told you the truth. Here's my master to vindicate it. And state I've told the truth. You'll know then. I believe he's here tonight to vindicate it, to say that it's the truth. Not wait till in the future. Now, what if I ask you to bow your head? Then quickly do it, see. Quickly bow your head. If I say bow your head now, if sometimes epilepsy gets away from it. So it's a horrible thing. It distracts a person. It'll jump from one to another like that. It's very vicious. And it's down through the age. It's had a great control of people. Remember the disciples couldn't cast that epileptic spell out of the boy? And they brought him to Jesus. You remember that? Remember that man had epilepsy and some fellows went out there, some preachers, boys, and thought that they had a gift of divine healing, went out and called over that devil, said, I jure thee by the name of Jesus who Paul preaches. Come out. Acts 19. You remember that? He said, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who are you? You remember that? And that devil always knows. That's the very thing that bothers me, not knowing that, but that's what's been long. Oh, sister, why would you doubt Come here, sister. Oh, Jesus, have mercy on the poor thing, Lord. She's trying hard, oh, but thou art here to help her. Dear God, as your humble servant lays hands upon her and asks this for mercy, grant it, Lord. Satan, I adjure thee by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come out of the woman. And don't bother her no more. Now, lady, do you, did I tell you the truth when I was speaking, whatever it was? If you were, if you attended doctors, I'd tell you what was wrong with you and what to do. You don't need to do it if you believe what, there's been pains in here, you've been worried, you thought you had cancer in, in your lungs. Isn't that right? I'm not reading your mind, but I, I know what... It isn't... You have a no cancer. That's a pinched nerve. That's exactly coming from the vertebrae in the back of your back. I have... That's, that's there. back there in the back. Is that right? Yes. All right. How do I know that? All right. Go believe now and be well in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's say praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ who giveth all good things to those who seek after Him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, just a moment, if I can remember, the lady is upset, and she thinks she had cancer. She's weary, she's cried, she's been prayed for, everything. I seen her standing. It was a building, something like this. There were many people rejoicing. Now, that materialized here before me, and I seen her troubled, and I looked around, and I seen her holding her back like this. It's nothing but a pinched vertebrae in her back. If she was going to a doctor, I'd say go to a chiropractor and let him relieve that. But if she's got faith in God, she don't need to go to a chiropractor. Jesus Christ does it for her. That's right. Amen. All right, everyone, remember. All right. Let's see. You're the... Oh, it's, it's a boy. All right. Well, bless his little heart. Fine boy. How do you believe, Mother? With all your heart. You believe? Well, not you just be seated there for the the chair, if you will, so I can get the little boy by himself. How do you do, little fellow? Fine. I imagine this little boy is yet like the fish. Is it? Ever a little boy. I you know what I think about little boys. 
I think a little boy that likes to fish and loves his mother is a good boy. <laughs> Would you believe that? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, poor little lad. Look here, sonny boy. You and I don't know one another, do we? But you realize what's wrong with you, don't you, honey? Look. You're suffering with a heart trouble. That's rheumatic fever in your heart, isn't it, sonny boy? Your parents are beside themselves almost. The doctor has done said he couldn't do nothing for you. You know that. But look at your sonny boy. Jesus Christ.